The number one question I am getting right now is how much money do I actually need to move to Australia? This video is aimed at people traveling to Australia or moving on a working holiday visa. So this is the working holiday visa 417, 462. There might be some other ones that I don't know about, but those are the two main ones. If you're new around here, my name is Dane Luca. I am a travel vlogger. Now, how am I qualified to make this video? I will quickly share with you. So I have traveled to over 40 countries and I recently moved to Australia about seven months ago. So I've actually lived here for about seven months, lived and worked in Australia. And I have also done the infamous East Coast trip. I spent about six weeks in 2020 traveling. So I have quite a lot of experience and I hope I can share my information, advice and knowledge with you guys if you are thinking of moving to Australia. If you find this video useful, please consider subscribing down below. Also give this video a thumbs up and leave any comments. I'm gonna start making more working holiday visa advice videos because they seem to be doing really well and I always get so many questions on Instagram and YouTube. So I wanna make more of these videos and I really hope you guys do find them useful. So let me know down below, what else do you wanna know? I also have a ton of other videos on my channel I post every single week. So there are so many videos you can go and binge. I would recommend this series here. If you're coming to Australia and you are going to Cairns, I did an eight day road trip with Travelers Autobahn and a few friends and it was absolutely epic. My biggest tip to you guys, if you are thinking about doing a working holiday visa in Australia, is firstly, just do it, YOLO. Secondly, everything will work out. No need to stress and worry about everything. That is from my personal experience. I had my visa approved and then literally moved like two or three weeks later not hadn't planned anything. I worked everything out eventually. I spent my first week setting up bank accounts, tax file numbers, all that fun stuff. So yeah, don't hesitate, just do it. And I hope my videos can inspire you to just do it because I always say to people, if you do it and you don't like it, you can always go back home. So in this video, we're gonna cover three main topics in relation to finances and moving to Australia on a working holiday visa. The first one is things you should know and things to budget for before moving to Australia things to know and budget for when you arrive in Australia and things to know for just in general living and working in Australia. We'll quickly add, if you are not moving here on a working holiday visa, you may just find this video useful just for insights on someone that's lived here for seven months. And yeah, I'm gonna be sharing some um, real life costs of living in this country. The first thing you are gonna to need to budget for is the visa. Now, the working holiday visa is currently 500 Australian dollars. I'll put all the conversions on screen so I know a lot of people watch my videos from Europe, Mexico, and the UK. So this is the first thing you're gonna to need to buy and I would not recommend booking your flight until you have your visa. My visa actually took three months to be approved have no idea why but I know some people get approved straight away and others can take up to a year. Once your visa has been approved the government sends you an email that says like grant notification meaning your your visa has been approved and you can move to Australia. After you've got your visa then you're then going to need to book a flight. Now I will say as someone that has booked a lot of flights over the years you can definitely get a one-way flight to Australia from Europe for at least £400 maybe even less. I recently got a return flight for 780 pounds going from Sydney to London and then London back to Sydney when I'm returning home in a few months. I have also had the question of, should I book a return flight back home? I would say no, because you don't know what you're gonna do after your working holiday visa. You might do other trips, you might stay longer, you might move to New Zealand, anything could happen. One thing to know when you are applying for your working holiday visa is that you need to show proof to the Australian government that you have at least 5,000 Australian dollars in your bank account. Now, when I applied for the visa, I sent screenshots of my bank account and I didn't have to show anyone at the border. I have been to other countries like America where they have actually asked to see my bank account then and there, otherwise they won't let me in. So I don't know if other people have experienced this in Australia, but they do recommend you have at least 5,000 Australian dollars in your bank account when you arrive. Then you're gonna need to consider, are you gonna just do everything on your own? Totally possible, I've done this twice now. Or are you going to budget for a tour when you land in Australia, such as the Welcome to Travel Tour? I personally have not done this myself, but I have just seen them all over Instagram. I've seen lots of people go on these tours and they look really great for just getting everything set up, meeting some friends when you first land in Australia, because it can be very scary. You know, I'm 28. I landed in Australia, I was in California for a few weeks, I'd been traveling for like 10 months prior and I, for some reason I was so nervous, I was like even though I know I've been to Australia this is a really big thing to 
you move across the other side of the world so if you're nervous it's completely natural don't be afraid you're gonna have so much fun you're gonna make so many friends I know I certainly have had an amazing seven months living in this country the next thing you're gonna need to budget for is insurance please 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 make sure you get insurance for any type of travel you do I know you may think oh it's an extra cost I don't need it but you never know what's gonna happen is your flight gonna be cancelled are you going to be in a car accident? Are you going to be in an accident when you're like skydiving? Anything can happen. I find it's always best to just have your travel insurance handy. And I will say be careful with the backpacker year long insurances because if you look at the finer details of those insurances, they only cover you for like X amount of days out of the country. Um, I'm sure there's some really great insurance out there. Personally, I have used Safety Wing for the past 18 months. I absolutely love it. Uh, I'll leave a dink link. I'll leave a dink. I will leave a link down below if you want to check that out. Um, I've personally had a really good experience with Safety Wing, and I like it because it's month to month, so I can cancel it anytime. I don't have to pay like one big year payment. I pay 42 US dollars a month, which is about 65 Australian dollars per month and I can cancel at any time and it also covers me for any country I want to go in the world so if whilst I'm in Australia I go to New Zealand or Vietnam or anywhere in Asia I'm still covered and it's just one payment every month so yeah, I will leave a link down below now the next thing um, I would say to budget for is an emergency fund so this could be emergency medical costs technology things breaking if you need a phone all of a sudden all these kind of things one thing I've learned over the last year is to always over budget because things pop up you know unexpected visa costs okay this flight is more expensive than i budgeted for so it's always good to have a little bit of a buffer i can't really put a limit on how much to budget for like an emergency fund but maybe like one to two thousand would be good so those are all the things you're going to need to consider budgeting for before you've even left for australia now we're going to get on to things to consider when you are landing in australia so when you land in australia you have finally made it here you're going to need to know am i going to be traveling straight away or am i going to be settling into a job and finding some accommodation i have done both so i've done the east coast trip i spent about six weeks going from cairns down to melbourne a few years ago absolute epic i loved it and i can't wait to re-explore some of those places whilst i'm currently on my working holiday visa now if you're going to be landing and starting to travel straight away i personally would budget between four and five hundred pounds per week that sounds like a lot of money but you really don't understand how expensive it is until you land it and i'll talk about a few of these costs in a bit so this budget would take into account accommodation in a hostel your transport food tours going out to eat and most importantly coffee so let's talk about accommodation first if you are on a budget hostels are going to be your best friend i know there's other things you can do like work away adopt a backpacker i don't know too much about that so i'm not going to talk about that most people tend to go to hostels and the reason i love hostels is because i make loads of friends there there's people of similar ages to me now hostels are going to set you back around 35 to 40 dollars per night for a decent hostel i've heard recently that there is an accommodation crisis in major cities like Sydney and Perth. I follow loads of backpacker groups, so this is how I know this. I actually did a bit of research on how much hostels are at the moment in Sydney, and they are crazy. When I had a brief look the other day, I was seeing hostel beds in a dorm room for like over a hundred dollars for one night, sharing with like eight people. That is not normal prices, that is crazy. When I first came to Sydney, I was paying about 35 to 40 dollars per night in Wake Up Sydney Central freaking love it there if you do get a chance to stay in the hostel do it i've stayed in a few others but that one is my favorite if you're staying in hotels that is going to set you back a lot more um i would budget at least 100 to 150 dollars per night these are more sort of major city costs such as sydney sydney does tend to be more expensive than other areas of australia so I would budget as if you're going to Sydney and then if you've got money left over, great. So meals out in restaurants are gonna set you back around 20 to $30 per meal. You can get cheaper meals or like fast food for like 10, $15. But usually when you go out to eat, it's end up costing me about $25. Coffee is surprisingly cheap here. Back home, a coffee would be the equivalent of about eight or nine Australian dollars if you're going for like a latte with oat milk. Here, I can get a latte with oat milk for $4. That is cheap. So tours, if you're going to do day activities, I would say they're going to be around $100. 
maybe a bit less, maybe a bit more dependent on how action packed they are. Car rentals are surprisingly cheap. If you're looking at renting a car, you can easily get a car rental for about $50 a day. And then camper van rental is gonna be $100 a day. I would also take into consideration these things are gonna be more expensive during the weekend and summer holiday times. In Australia, the summer holiday is from December to January. So I know back in Europe, that is the long winter, that is Christmas time. But in Australia, it's freaking hot here. So to sum up, if you are arriving in Australia and you are traveling, I would budget between four and 500 pounds per week. If you're gonna be working straight away, you're gonna be looking for somewhere to live, I would budget around 250 pound to maybe 350 pound. Another thing I would recommend you get when you come to Australia, if you are moving here, is a Wise account. Now I'll leave a sign up link down below. Again, not sponsored. I just find good things that I find are really helpful. I'm gonna share them with you guys. So you can actually use your Wise card to open accounts in 50 different currencies and it's so inexpensive to transfer money to your home account. So you can either use this as a bank card and when you are applying for jobs in Australia, you can use this and open an Australian bank account with Wise. I have certain memberships and direct debits from a UK account. So I have sent money back to my UK account a few times. It is expensive to do this if you don't do it with Wise. So for instance, I recently sent 2000 Australian dollars to my UK bank account it cost me $10, which is nothing compared to what other banks charge. Usually this would cost about $50, $60. So you are getting a significantly better rate. I think the reason for this is they have banks in all the countries around the world. So that's why they can get it cheaper. I also love the card because it's, you know, bright green. It's got no card details on so you can't see. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna talk about is living and working costs. So the reason it is a working holiday visa is because you are gonna to need to work to holiday in this country. It shocked me to my core when I moved here. When I traveled here a few years ago, I didn't notice how expensive things are, but now I actually live here. I am really shocked at how expensive things are. So I'm gonna give you a rundown of a few things. Um, good thing to know is that if you are coming here on a working holiday visa, your tax is only 15% for the first $45,000. So to only be taxed 15%, it's really easy to save up a lot of money quickly and the wages here are a lot higher. So the tax is 15% for the first 45,000 and then anything over that is 32.5%. So you get taxed less and you get paid more, which is good for saving money. The average hourly rate for a job in Australia is $35. I know that you can easily get a job in hospitality for like $30 an hour. If you work in healthcare, $40 an hour. I even know people that do the traffic controlling, road work, laboring work, and they get paid over $50 an hour, even more at weekends. So it's really easy to get a good paying job. Also to mention, there is nearly half a million job vacancies in this country. So I think at the moment they have a lot of job vacancies, not enough people to fill them. So. It is quite easy to get a job. I found it quite easy to get a job. All of my friends that I know have been able to get a job quite easily. So if you're coming here, hopefully you can get a job easily too. So I've gathered my weekly costs, what I typically spend on a weekly basis. I will also add that they do everything weekly and bi-weekly in this country. So you'll pay your rent weekly, you will get paid weekly or bi-weekly. And I find that really strange as, a con as coming from a country where I pay my rent every month. Um, even my gym membership, when I was paying that, I pay that weekly. Weird as fuck. Let's talk about accommodation. So if you are living in a hostel, you could probably get a good rate between two to three hundred dollars per week. Don't book it online. Just go up to the reception desk and say like, what are your weekly rates for long term people? Um, if you are like me and you're absolutely sick of hostels after living in them for nearly a year, I quickly managed to find a house share. I lived with eight other backpackers and I was paying around $270 per week. That was really at the lower end in Sydney. I don't know how I got such a bargain, but I also did share that house with cockroaches and eight other people. And one of my roommates did not have a window in his bedroom. Lots of Facebook groups where backpackers will put in accommodation and I'm seeing some crazy freaking shit in there at the moment. Like I'm seeing rooms for like 300, in excess of $500 per week. So definitely have a good look around, look on flatmates.com.au, look around on Facebook, Marketplace, those types of places. Before you move into like a house share, you're gonna need to pay one or two weeks rent upfront and then a bond, which is usually four weeks. So if you're paying 
$250 per week for your rent, times that by four, $1,000 is your bond. I'm gonna put on screen here these costs as well. So you've got gym, $15 to $30 per week on average. Phone plan, I'd say around $10 per week. Insurance is gonna be $10 to $15 per week. I'll link down below. Safety wing, what else have we got? Transport, now I was, when I was living in Sydney and I was commuting every day, I was paying between, I was paying on average about $50 per week, which actually isn't that bad. I find public transport in this country is really inexpensive compared to countries like England, where, you know, you get like a one hour train journey and you just, you just robbed. So next up, alcohol. I don't personally drink alcohol, but I did ask a few of my friends that do drink. They said the average price of a pint of beer in Australia is $12 and then food. This is the most important thing. The reason that I'm making this video is because I was really shocked when I came here and the price of food literally blew me away. Like there is certain food that I don't buy because it's so expensive. So I moved to Australia in March, it's currently October when I'm making this video and there has been times when I haven't been able to afford certain food. So going into the supermarket, I'm on my working holiday visa, I go into Woolies or Coles, I really don't think there's much price difference. There is also an Aldi there, but there's not that many in the Sydney CBD. So I go into the supermarket, avocados, a dollar, two dollar, great. Broccoli, eight dollars. I paid eight dollars for a piece of broccoli once, like literally eight dollars. I felt sick. Um, the reason was because there was a, a broccoli crisis. This happens quite regularly, I've seen it. There'll be like a crisis of a certain food. And I think it's mainly because um, this country has been affected by the weather so much. Capsicum, so peppers, they are quite expensive as well. I think they're like $15 a kilo. Um, I do not buy those anymore because they are very expensive. What else is expensive? Tomatoes. Okay, I come from a country where tomatoes are like $1 for like a pack. Here, they're like $8. $8 for like five tomatoes. To me, that is insane. And when I tell my friends back home, I feel like they don't believe me or I feel like I'm just always badgering on about how much things cost in this country. But I was really shocked and I know you will be too. I would say when you're looking at your budget, just be careful because you will, you know, look, look at the prices is what I'll say. So I'm gonna end this video here, guys. I hope you have found it useful. I hope it has inspired you somewhat to not be so scared to come to Australia and to give you a realistic picture of how much it's gonna cost, how much things are costing in this country because as I said, I was pretty shocked. Just to conclude, if you are traveling Australia, I would budget between four to 500 pounds, maybe a little bit more depending if you drink alcohol. Alcohol is gonna eat up a lot of your money because booze is expensive. So all you would need to do is say if you were moving to Australia and then you plan, right, I'm gonna travel for six weeks, you would just do like four or 500 pounds times six and then make sure you have money left over to uh, get some accommodation before you start work. As recommended, I know it says $5,000 is what you need to get started in Australia. I think that's actually perfect. If you're gonna come here and you're just gonna start living and working, that will help you out for a few weeks, maybe a month to get you started. You are gonna need a lot more than that if you are gonna be traveling the East Coast because there's so many tours you're gonna wanna do, you know, skydiving, which Sunday, Fraser Island, all those things. Lots of fun, I totally recommend you do it. Um, but yeah, I hope you found this video useful. Let me know down below, give this video a thumbs up. And you can hit the bell notification icon as well and that just notifies you when I post new videos. Let me know in the comments down below, what else do you wanna know about working holiday visas and moving to Australia? Because it can be very scary. I know this from personal experience. You're not on your own. I felt totally nervous before I moved here, but I made friends easy, I found a job easy. You know, I'm not saying it's gonna be easy, but it will work itself out. Like just trust trust the universe, it's gonna work itself out, it's all gonna be good. And I'll link down below some other videos um, that I've done about Australia. And yeah, hope you've enjoyed the video guys. Take care and peace out.